and we just got to go fix it and fix it now. Coming up as dead fish wash ashore on some Suncoast beaches, what one lawmaker is doing to help in the struggle against red tide. Plus, books, binders, and backpacks, how you can get your kids ready to go back to school while saving some money all weekend long. How a water main break in downtown Bradenton is impacting drivers and an animal shelter. Your Suncoast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at noon. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Our top story today at noon, red tide. Right now, crews are working at Lido, Siesta and Turtle Beaches to clean up thousands of dead fish that have again washed ashore. ABC 7's Jackie Kelly joins us now live from Siesta Key with the current red tide conditions there. Jackie. Scott, I'm here at Siesta Key, and let me tell you, when I pulled into the parking lot, it was empty. There's not too many beachgoers here on the sand, and now the smell isn't too bad, but the closer you walk to the water, it does get worse. Now, I can see some of those crews picking up fish farther down the sand, and now the county says they started working on removal at around 7 o'clock this morning at Siesta Key in Lido using mechanical raking. And now at 9 a.m., the Sheriff's Worker Offender Program started removal at Turtle Beach using hand removal and bagging of the fish. That group will move to Blind Pass once they're done doing that. And now the county says staff is also working to remove fish from boat ramps. Ken Thompson, Ted Sperling Nature Center, Heigl, Vamo, Blackburn Point, Turtle Beach, and Wharf. Now there's a total of 22 staff members working on fish removal with seven pieces of equipment throughout the beaches. And now the county says that they're taking this day by day. They're not sure how many more days they're going to be having to bring crews out to remove the fish. Scott, back to you. All right, Jackie, thank you so much. New at noon, Governor Rick Scott says he's now directing two state agencies to use all of their available resources to help coastal communities now being affected by red tide. Governor I'm Scott sure says the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection will boost their cleanup efforts and water testing. FWC will also send more scientists to our area to help save animals that are being affected by red tide. For weeks, dead fish have been washing ashore in counties just south of the Sun Coast, and it's now happening on more beaches in northern Sarasota County. Sun Coast Congressman Vern Buchanan is calling on state and federal officials to do more in the effort to combat red tide. Buchanan sat down with us to discuss what can be done at a legislative level. Buchanan says he's met with numerous experts, including those at Moat Marine Lab, who have all told him different opinions on why this red tide is so strong. Buchanan says after seeing its effects firsthand, he'll be directing NOAA to allocate a good chunk of the $8 million federal dollars they just received to Moat Marine Lab for new research. We go back and figure out what we think we're going to need and uh, what uh, Moat and others will mention myself or my staff. And then we go to work on getting the money and trying to sell why that's important to the state of Florida. And uh, I think this money that's coming now uh, was before this, this bout of red tide that's out there now. And it seems to be more intense than normal. Buchanan says after the recess, he plans to lead a new effort doing everything he can to convince Washington that mitigating red tide is worth the federal dollars. We are constantly updating information about the red tide conditions on our website, mysuncoast.com. We also have links to the latest red tide reports. The FWC, by the way, will be releasing its latest report on red tide later this afternoon. So we'll put that up on our website when it becomes available. And John, of course, is following the, the beach conditions today as well. And uh, not so great news, I'm guessing. You know, not so great news, yeah. yeah. Uh, although we're starting to see a wind shift to a more easterly direction, which could help in a day or two or three push yeah. some of that toxin out into right. open waters or at least further from shore. So yeah. that's the good news. But yes, it has creeped up a little further to the north, and there are now indications of Coquina Key of some slight irritant in the air, which follows the drift forecasts we showed you yesterday. So. That's unfortunate, but uh, that's how it is. We're looking at a few scattered showers building in inland areas now. That's where the rain will come from today, inland locations, but it will focus near the coastline. We have, generally speaking, the nearest massive rain out in Gulf waters, kind of left over from old boundaries yesterday, which pushed through and 
now exited the region. Temperatures are warming quickly. We're in the upper 80s already in many locations, and I think we're well on the way to seeing temperatures that will be at 90 or above. Future cast shows today. I think we can focus a few more of those showers right along the immediate coastline. That's because of that easterly wind kind of pinning that sea breeze closer to the coast. It's not so much along the spine of the state, though we certainly still could see a few showers and thunderstorms in inland areas as well. They'll build inland, they'll drift out toward Gulf waters today. Winds are generally all out of the east, north and south across the region. So that's the good news. We'll have the Red Tide report for you coming up in just a few. Scott. All right, John, thank you. Two women are facing charges this afternoon after Sarasota police officers say they found illegal drugs in their car and two small children. Police say they witnessed the two women parked in a driveway on Midway Parkway in Sarasota, injecting themselves with needles. Also in the car, Crystal McLeod's two three-year-old children. Police also found powder cocaine, rock cocaine, marijuana, and other drug paraphernalia inside that car. The children were taken to Sarasota Memorial Hospital to be checked out, and the Department of Children and Families was notified. McLeod is charged with child neglect and drug possession. Lisa Bryan is charged with drug possession. And first alert traffic in emergency road repairs underway this afternoon due to a water main break in downtown Bradenton. Manatee Avenue West from 9th Street to 10th Street is closed as a result while crews work on repairs that are estimated to take around two weeks to fix. Traffic will be a problem in that area, including the Greenbridge southbound into Bradenton. For a detour map, you can go to our website, mysuncoast. Com. And due to that water main break, Manatee County Animal Services has closed its cat adoption center and is now in desperate need of foster homes. The shelter is on Manatee Avenue West in Bradenton and is currently housing more than 30 cats and kittens, which will now either have to be moved to Manatee County Animal Services Palmetto Shelter, go to a foster home, or better yet, get adopted. The facility will be closed until We're always further notice. We're always looking for people to foster animals, volunteers to help out, because it's going to be a little crunched here, because any animals now will have to be available here until we can reopen down there. One thing expected to help find those kitties' homes, Manatee County Animal Services annual Adopt-A-Palooza. That happens tomorrow, where more than 100 pets will be up for adoption from 11 a.m. until 4. It happens at the Bradenton Area Convention Center in Palmetto. Parking and admission are free. We're just 10 days away now from the start of the new school year. Do you believe that? And this weekend, it's time to stock up on supplies. Today starts the annual back to school sales tax holiday. ABC 7's Marla Spence joins us with everything you need to know to save some money this weekend. As students head back to school this year, they're going to need essential items like these to help them get through the year. Starting today, parents and students can get close to everything they need with this year's back to school sales tax holiday. We need glue sticks, glue of all kinds, <laughs> um, binders, folders, notebooks, that kind of stuff. But we're pretty new to Florida, so we've never experienced a tax free thing, so we're going to try it. The sales tax holiday began today and wraps up Sunday right before midnight. Items exempt from taxes are clothing, shoes, and school supplies. These items are tax-free if they ring up to 60 bucks or less per item. Your basic school supply items are also tax-free if they ring up to being less than 15 bucks per item. One thing not to forget this year, though, computers and computer-related accessories are not tax-free like they were last year. But don't worry, there is still lots of money that can be saved this tax holiday. Just yesterday, Governor Rick Scott was in Tampa highlighting this weekend's back-to-school sales tax holiday. He mentioned this weekend alone, Florida families are saving $32.7 million. We have a huge family. Um, this is number seven on the way, so yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to save some money. It's also great to remember some retailers will be having sales of their own in addition to offering coupons. This is a great way to save more money, so keep your eye out for those deals. For a full list of items exempt and non-exempt, you can head to our website, mysuncoast.com. I'm Marla Spence reporting for ABC7, your Suncoast News. Marla, thank you. Getting ready for a new school year is not cheap, as we just showed you. And the Gettle Automotive Group wants to make sure Suncoast students in need get all the school supplies they need. This Saturday, tomorrow, volunteers will be at the Walmart on Callowan Road in Sarasota and the Walmart on State Road 64 East in Bradenton. They'll be at each location from 10 until 2, collecting supplies and backpacks to donate to the Manatee and Sarasota Education Foundations. 
ABC 7 business commentator Jeff Stern joins us now with the check of the day on Wall Street so far. We've had a pretty strong week of earnings, and but the markets have kind of been mixed this week, up and De down. Definitely, back and forth, yeah. but uh, great earnings, that's for sure. The Dow is actually down about a half a percent for the week, while NASDAQ's taking the lead again. You know, the Dow's been leading the last couple of weeks. NASDAQ's up about three quarters of a percent. S&P right in the middle, just up a quarter percent for the week. But as Scott mentioned, earnings have been very strong. As you all know, I'm sure we saw Apple at one trillion dollar value today. Kraft Heinz came out, super strong earnings as well. What has that done to the Treasury so far? About 2.95. It's still right around there for the 10 year Treasury. Woke up this morning, the futures were positive, but let's see how we're currently trading. The Dow Jones Industrial positive, 25,389, up 63 points, a quarter of a 1%, while NASDAQ, who's been leading the week, is down today, 7,796, down six points, less than a tenth of a percent, while the S&P, 2,832, up 5.32, almost a quarter of 1%. Yeah, so it's the uh, first Friday of the month. That means a new jobs report is out. So what are we seeing today? That's right. They get to look back and see what July looked like. 157,000 new jobs, lower than the 190 they were expecting. But as they know, they that's always revised. The last couple of months that they've revised it about 50,000. So we'll pay attention to that. Unemployment fell to 3.9 percent. That was expected. The big reason last month was. 4%, 600,000 new people, new Americans came to the job market last month. And the wage growth, which we still would like to see much stronger, it's about 2.7% for the year this last month, 03 You know, these are some big numbers that the Fed looks at to decide if we're going to raise rates or keep them stay or even lower them. So we'll see. But they're looking part of the overall picture for the economy, and it looks pretty good right now. We just want to see that wage growth a little Absolutely. more positive. Yeah. Definitely. All right. For everybody. Yeah, you know it. Jeff, Definitely. thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Scott. You too. Still to come in your Suncoast News, Chef Judy will be joining us for lunch from the Lobster Pot in Siesta Key. Plus, a new study finds a disturbing increase in violent and unintentional injuries. I'll show you how it compares to previous decades. The ABC7 Stock Report is sponsored by Sunset Cadillac. Monday at 9 on Suncoast View. It is the last week of summer vacation for Suncoast students. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. A Sarasota mom blogger kicks off our back to school week with tips to get both parents and kids prepared for their new routine. Manatee Players previews Newsies with a special musical performance. Plus, this bachelorette season is coming to a close. We'll plan a watch party plus summer house siesta key in the kitchen. Monday at 9 on Suncoast View. There's nothing like this, this trail in Alabama. It just goes from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state. We see all kind of different terrains, great value, great fun. We've been coming for 18 years. We started off with a group of eight, grew to 12, and grew to 16. And we love it because where else can you get world-class golf courses with world-class accommodations? To be able to play these type of courses in this environment and the difficulty uh, keeps us coming back over and over and over again. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases, a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system could make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> 
Now, SoClean.com has released the world's first automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs and bacteria. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer, risk-free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. The SoClean works, and it's a really effective product, and I couldn't believe how easy it was to use. SoClean works on all popular CPAP machines and masks, destroying CPAP germs and bacteria without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and walk away. Voila! Sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited-time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398, or visit SoClean.com today. Now your ABC7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Getting warm outside already at 88 degrees, well on the way to hit 90 once again. We'll probably get about 91, 92 for a daytime high. We have a southeast wind now at about 6, a dew point value of 74. That easterly component is really going to be important over the next couple of days in terms of these red tide toxins that are in the air, especially if we get a nice strong southeasterly wind flow that keeps that sea breeze either pinned close to the beach or doesn't even allow it to form. That would be nice. 30% uh, chance of rainfall by the time we get to 3 p.m. Scattered showers around both inland and near the coast, but focused a little closer to the coast today than they have been over the last several days. And then the trend will be for those rain shower chances to decrease as we head through time. So the latest Moat Marine spotter reports. Well, as anticipated, we have seen a little bit of a northward creep in the red tide toxin irritant in the air at Coquina Beach now. Still Holmes Beach is A-OK. -okay. We've got Lido and Siesta both coming in with intense levels. And also at Gasparilla, Nokomis has come down a little bit. It's gone from moderate to low amounts of irritant in the air. Venice Beach remains at moderate. The winds out of the southeast will turn a little bit more to the west this afternoon, though the sea breeze will be weaker than in previous days, meaning it shouldn't penetrate as far inland as it has. We have a few scattered showers out in the Gulf waters that will carry on. We have some rivers still at flood stage and all minor flooding as we head into the next couple of days. We'll continue to watch this easterly wind flow continue, pushing showers from inland areas toward the coastline, favoring the coastline, keeping the sea breeze shallow and near the coast. And over the next several days as well, we'll watch high pressure begin to build in as this persistent trough that has led to such inclement weather along the eastern seaboard begins to lift out. As it lifts out, high pressure expands, we get that sinking dome of air, and it reduces the number of storms that we get as well. Now today we think we'll see fewer than we saw yesterday, and tomorrow we'll see even fewer still. A general easterly wind flow will carry on through the next couple of days. As it builds, we get drier air moving in. The closer we get to uh, getting a stronger easterly wind flow, the closer we get to seeing those storms right along the immediate coastline. Now, in this image, as I've shown you all week long, because it's important to our weekend forecast here, the dry air are the cooler colors, and the very moisture-rich air is red. Redder is wetter. We'll put it into motion and you'll watch some of that moist air that we have had around begin to be replaced by the dry air. You'll also notice little like wavelets of moist air passing by from time to time. Now, I don't think we're going to be completely dry over the weekend, but we will be a little bit lower than average in our rainfall amounts. And as we head into next week, I think we'll see little packets of moisture running by as well. So some days will be a little bit drier than others. Tropics still look good. Water temperatures are lower than average. Interesting as to why that is, if it's a, just a decadal cycle or whether it has to do with Arctic ice melt. We're not sure whether it's related to a warming climate or not. We'll see what happens in the seasons ahead. But one thing's for sure, that combined with Saharan dust combined with upper level shear is going to create a situation where it's going to be tough to produce a storm over the next really 10 to 15 days, but certainly over the next five days, these areas of blue are high shear areas and that occurs in our near area waters as well. So southwest wind today developing with that sea breeze becoming more easterly during the overnight at about 10. Rain chance today at about 30%, same thing true tomorrow. 
probably kind of an identical day tomorrow with maybe even fewer showers around. We'll see. And then Sunday we'll up the rain chance a little bit as one of those little wavelets of moisture passes by Monday and on Tuesday we'll watch those rain chances drop as more dry air filters in. And then as we head into next week, we'll still keep the rain chances lower than average for this time of year. Scott. John, thank you. In HealthSmart, more Americans are being injured in car crashes and from gunshot wounds. According to a study published this week in JAMA Surgery, the U.S. has experienced a disturbing increase in violent and unintentional injuries over the last few years. The study examined the period between 2000 and 2016 and found injury remains a leading cause of death in the nation. Those findings reverse positive gains that were made in the 1980s and 90s. Well, it's lunchtime, so ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher joins us today from a local favorite, the Lobster Pot on Siesta Key. Hi, Judy. Hi there, Scott. Well, that's right. Now, this is all fresh New England seafood. You don't have to worry about Red Tide. Where we are right in the village, we can't even smell it, and all the seafood's been flown in from New England, so we know we're gonna have a delicious time. Their lobster pot has been here for several years, and there's a great historic piece of the family and their journey coming from Providence, where they had unbelievable restaurant for over 40 years up in P-Town. So we're going to find out that information and get to hear all about how they make a whole bunch of delic deliciousness and there's a lot of lobsters involved. So stay with me throughout the hour. We're coming to you right here from Siesta Key getting ready for the weekend with lobsters and so much more right here at the Lobster Pot. We'll be back in a few minutes. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to Mesobook.com. So, you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So, pop quiz, which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. In the park on a bench, on the beach on a towel, or on your couch with your kid, your campus is wherever you want it to be. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence, that's Independence University. You schedule classes around your schedule and all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet are included with tuition. At Independence U, you'll learn from professional instructors with real work experience. You'll get personal support in school and employment assistance when you graduate. Get your degree, but keep your life. That's Independence, that's Independence University. So if you're really smart, you'd call now. Call 1-800-965-2704. Independence U for an independent U. Call 1-800-965-2704. Without the letters A, B, and O, there's no mom. No dad. There's no Brittany. Because A's, B's, and O's determine your blood type. And we're missing all of them. That's why the American Red Cross needs people like you to help fill the gaps. Schedule your donation at redcrossblood.org. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. I just need a second. Is your weight holding you back and affecting your health? Did you see this? Hmm? Your cousin had a heart attack. Really? Excess weight or obesity can be serious, but you can do something about it. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Download the free toolkit to prepare you to speak with a healthcare provider. Your weight does matter. Accept the challenge and take charge today. Visit yourweightmatters.org. 
Welcome back. Let's meet our pet of the week now. John is with the founder of Dante's Den and host of Animal Outtakes, Marsha Panucci, to tell us more about Daisha. Daisha. Oh, what a beautiful dog <laughs> this is. She is gorgeous. She's so gorgeous. Yes, she is. Both That's inside and out, for sure. And she has the most beautiful gold eyes. Well, Did you does. see that, John? Show off your eyes. There, yes, please. she just has got gorgeous yeah. eyes. Daisha is a pup. She's about 11 months old, approximately. And uh, she is just wonderful. She is housebroken. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, yeah, she oh, is. Boy. And she is also crate trained. Uh, and she loves to play and uh, loves to go for car rides, especially if there's an ice cream cone at oh. the end of the ride. Oh, <laughs> oh my son's not watching. He'll want to adopt a ride. He's got an American Bulldog and absolutely loves that animal oh, more yeah, than anything. Oh, yes. You, you know, they, they're just absolutely so sweet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we sit in the green room and we try to get them calm. There was no reason to get her calm. <laughs> she, she was just kind of snoozing away. And when she came here into the studio, the cameras did not bother her, Look which is you. an excellent sign. But just she's just not a nervous girl. No. She's just very, very calm yeah. and steadfast and loves all the attention. I think she'd be a great football companion for you on Sundays. And I also think that she loves the car rides and just loves to be loved. And She's you can about see as that. beautiful as a dog can be. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you. And I always love these little right, white marks that are here. And you notice they match the white paws. You, it just doesn't get any more beautiful than that. How do they adopt this girl? Well, this girl is being presented today by the Animal Services of Sarasota County. And you can call 941 eight six one nine five hundred and she's going to be waiting for you i think she's going to go fast she is going to go fast she, yeah. first of all she's beautiful to look at yes she is and secondly what a sweet disposition yes yeah, she's what a good a girl. girl good yeah. girl all right give him a call get this dog <laughs> into your home if you have a, a space because she sure would be a great addition marcia thanks very much thanks, have a great John. weekend you too scott thank you both let's get back out now to culinary director judy gallagher who is at the lobster pot on siesta key for lunch today judy and Scott, I know you've been here and enjoy it well. I want you to meet Glenn Medeiros, who's one of the owners. Glenn, thanks for having us in. And Thank tell you. us a little history about how you started the Lobster Pot. Came from Massachusetts over to here. Yes, uh, my folks uh, own the Lobster Pot in Provincetown, Mass. Uh, they were in business for 40 years. That's pretty impressive. So, you know, it kind of got into the blood a little bit here, yeah. you know. So I pursued the career to be an entrepreneur in the restaurant business. So my wife and I, we decided to open up a little New, C New England seafood restaurant here, and we found this location on Siesta Key. We were very excited about it. We decorated, my wife Kathy decorated the restaurant, and uh, we opened the doors, and uh, it's been a very successful business for us here in Florida. Well, and it's the perfect location because you're right here in the heart of Siesta Key. And when people are on vacation, they, I mean, you, you want to enjoy some fresh things, especially stuff. What happened? I don't know. A break. A what? A commercial. Hello, Mom. Amanda's mom's appointment just got rescheduled for today. Amanda needs right at home. Our customized care plan provides as much or as little help as her mom requires, whether it's a ride to the doctor or help around the house. Oh, of course. Tom, I am really sorry. I've got to go. Look, call right at home. Get the right care right at home. According to a new survey by U.S. News & World Report, three of Alabama's top four hotels and resorts are part of the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail Resort Collection. The Grand Hotel Marriott Resort in Point Clear, the Battle House Renaissance Mobile Hotel & Spa, and the Renaissance Birmingham Ross Bridge Golf Resort & Spa. Hey, we didn't invent Southern hospitality, we just offer more of it. Visit rtjgolf.com resorts to find out more. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. 
I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. We believe in patriotism. We believe in our nation's youth. We believe veterans earn their benefits through their service to our nation. We believe in a strong national security. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion, and we believe it makes a difference. Where if you're a criminal and you've left your DNA at the scene, you might as well turn yourself in now. Coming up, a string of cold cases suddenly being solved with new technology, but could it violate your privacy? Plus, a look at the severe weather that's sweeping parts of the nation and a wild story about why you should always remember to lock your car doors. You're watching ABC 7 News at 1230. Welcome back. New at noon, high profile cold cases are finally being solved by using new cutting edge DNA testing. So what are police now using here on the Sun Coast? ABC 7's Stephanie Webb has that story. For almost 30 years, police in Fort Wayne, Indiana, had the DNA of the man that killed eight-year-old April Tinsley back in 1988, but they couldn't make a match. Then, a break, a new type of high-tech DNA testing, one that involved plugging the crime scene DNA into online genealogy database GEDmatch. This new process quickly narrowed down the suspects to two brothers, one who finally confessed to the murder. Today, we're at a point where if you're a criminal and you've left your DNA at the scene, you might as well turn yourself in now. It's the latest in a series of high-profile cold cases that have been cracked by this new cutting-edge technique. It's something that Sarasota police have taken notice of. Uh, we've seen that technology surface in the last few to several years, probably. While Sarasota police aren't using the genealogy DNA testing yet, they are now using familial DNA, a newer technique that uses DNA from a suspect's relatives. It's very hard to defend against a positive DNA sample. Uh, the introduction now of this familial DNA processing uh, just it enhances our ability to do our job and, and come to successful prosecutions in these cases, particularly cold cases. Now that familial DNA that Sarasota PD uses comes from family members that are already in the system. But the new genealogy DNA technique is raising some big privacy concerns. In fact, just this week, several online genealogy databases created new privacy policies that let you know if you do submit your DNA online, it could be used by police. Stephanie Webb for ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Stephanie. New details now on the trial of suspected school shooter Nicholas Cruz. Late this morning, a South Florida judge will now allow the release of Cruz's education records. The judge ruling the report protects Cruz's privacy rights and does not seem to threaten his right to a fair trial. Defense attorneys contend the Broward County School System's report on his longstanding psychological problems is misleading. Media organizations, including the Associated Press, argued it should be disclosed under Florida's broad public records laws. This is the latest of several legal battles involving release or evidence about Cruz, such as video showing the law enforcement response at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and his post-arrest statement. 19-year-old Cruz faces the death penalty if convicted of killing 17 people and wounding 17 others in that Valentine's Day attack. The historic courthouse in Manatee County will be closed for the next two and a half days so crews can treat it for termites. The courthouse on Manatee Avenue West just closed at noon and will reopen Monday. The building will be draped with tents while crews fumigate it. During that closure, the clerk of the Circuit Court's office will still offer some services at the Manatee County Judicial Center right next door, including child support customer service case managers and court-related services like marriage licenses and passport applications. A stretch of tough weather for a swath of the United States and beyond. ABC's Aaron Katursky shows us the conditions across the country. Heavy rain, strong storms, and more to come as downpours swamp the Appalachians and push into the Atlantic coast. Six inches of rain fell in Lynchburg, Virginia, where the College Lake Dam was in danger of failing. 
This is what it looked like last night. The water has receded now, but the dam's infrastructure sustained some damage. Strong, damaging winds blew through parts of the Carolinas up into the northeast. In one New York City neighborhood, people swore there was a tornado. And I heard that a lot of noise and the winds blew up and a heavy rain and then it went big bangs. Start moving now. The people on the left part. The storm interrupted a concert featuring Jay-Z and Beyonce, herself a force of nature. There are still flash flood watches from Georgia to Vermont, including big cities like Atlanta, Washington, D.C., and Albany. And the rough weather is hardly confined to the east. A strong storm blew through Goodyear, Arizona. It sounded like a hell was being unleashed, just slamming against our house, especially at the worst points. It was pretty scary because we had seven horses running. Yeah, yeah, and, and they, they were like scared two. out of their minds, and there was tin flying through the air. The wild weather's an issue in parts of Europe, too. Spain and Portugal are bracing for temperatures around 115 degrees this weekend. Here in New York, it's nice enough out now, save for the stickiness, but more heavy rain is moving in by evening rush, and forecasters say anywhere from New Jersey up to New Hampshire, there could be more flooding. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. It's been a summer of extremes across the country. It's a hot and dry and forest fires out west, and then too yep. much rain in the east. Yeah. Kind of fits in with the whole uh, climate change scenario that, uh, you know, the scientists were talking about for years and years and years. We'll see if that continues on in the future, but uh, yeah. it's looking that way. We've got uh, around our area, uh, of course, our algae bloom to deal with, and hopefully uh, developing easterly wind flow will aid in uh, at least alleviating some of that problem, maybe. We'll see how how that works out. Uh, Tower Camp showed a few fair weather clouds out there. Those are the showers out in the distance. Actually, an old boundary left over from yesterday's activity, kind of gradually drifting further and further away from our Gulf Coast. But out uh, near Lake Okeechobee, we're starting to see a little bit of activity there building as the winds generally out of the east or southeast. They've been due easterly earlier on. Now they're a little more southeasterly. Continue to draw moisture from the Atlantic and push it across the uh, peninsula. We will see that continue on today. Uh, temperatures are generally about where they were yesterday. In a few places, a degree or two cooler, and some places, a degree or so warmer. So I think we'll probably top it out about where we did yesterday as well, about 91 or 92 degrees for a daytime high. Rain chances will be slightly less than yesterday and focus near the coast. We'll put them at about 30%. Weekend forecast coming up in a second, Scott. Thank you, John. We'll see you then. The Walmart in Venice has taken, was taken over by police officers and their new friends as members from Venice Police helped a dozen kids get ready to go back to school. They went down every aisle looking for school supplies, backpacks, scissors, whatever they might need, picking out clothes as well for the new school year. This is the Venice Police Department's 30th annual Shop with a Cop event where they provided about $300 for 12 kids from the community plus a shopping buddy for the day from the department's office. Something that these kids don't ever normally get to do every year with it with a cop, you know, police officer to be able to go out and go shopping and spend that special time having that positive, uh, you know, interaction with them, with us and be able to do this day is just a very special rewarding uh, thing for each and every one of us that's doing this for these uh, kids. Venice police work with the Salvation Army to select the children who need the most help this year. Summer camps are winding down here on the Sun Coast, but there's one camp that has a curriculum like few others. This is the local YMCA's annual Camp Incredible, where camp directors say reading is a large component of each day. The kids spend part of the afternoons reading something of their choice, and on some mornings they have guest readers like YMCA CEO Laura Gilbert. The director of the youth development says it's important to get kids in the habit of reading. But providing them that time might not be something that they get an opportunity to do at home. Um, so it's, it's really creating a habit that could ask, last a lifetime. I solemnly swear to do my best. The camp begins and ends each day with the pledge to review core values. The reading activities are part of a community-wide summer book challenge supported by Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading and the Patterson Foundation. An update now on whether or not to ban a greyhound racing in the state and will it be on the November ballot. The answer is still right at this point is maybe. The state quickly appealed a ruling which knocked that greyhound racing ban off the November ballot. The amendment was one of eight ballot measures placed on the November 6th general election ballot by the state constitution revision commission. The proposal sought to ban commercial greyhound racing in the state after December 31st, 2020. 
Supporters of that amendment say they'll continue to fight to protect racing dogs, while opponents call the ban misleading. This issue has been out there for a long time. We know it's illegal in 40 other states. The CRC process put this on the ballot, and I think it's fair and just to give Florida voters a voice. 12 of the 18 Greyhound tracks that still exist nationwide are located in Florida, including one in Sarasota. A good reminder now to never leave your car unlocked because you never know who will get inside. Take a look at one example caught on camera. It shows the moment when Colorado Sheriff's deputies came across a bear inside of a car. Seems like the bear entered the vehicle to get the food inside, trashing the interior before taking a nap. That's when deputies came across the scene and used a rope to uh, open the door, awaken the bear, who then ran off. As for the owner of the vehicle, they'll probably think twice next time about leaving their vehicle unlocked. That's going to need a new interior. Coming up on ABC 7 News at 4 this afternoon, as red tide continues to affect Suncoast beaches, businesses are feeling the effect. We'll hear from some local hotels about the impact it's having on tourism. Plus, a Florida boy is making it his mission to thank every police officer in the United States. We hope to see you this afternoon for ABC 7 News at 4. Right now, let's get back out live to ABC 7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher, who's at the Lobster Pot on Siesta Key for lunch today, where, Judy, I want you to say hello to Tony and Fran for me. I promise Tony and Fran, Scott Dennis is sending his best, and they'll be sending you a lobster roll back, Scott. No surprise coming. Tony, tell us what you prepared today, because it is a surprise. Uh, we have a lot of stuff here, uh, a lot of our signature plates, and um, let's get right to it. Absolutely. Uh, we have a stuffed Maine lobster. It's called our Lobster Duchess. Uh, it's uh, third generation, my grandmother's recipe. Uh, it's made with uh, shrimp, scallops, lobster meat, crab meat, a little Parmesan cheese and sherry put on Ooh. top and baked in the oven, served with drawn butter. Uh, we make our own mashed potatoes here, and that's one of the sides I decided to put on the plate here. Our coleslaw is fresh and cut every day. Uh, next, uh, we have a nice filet. Uh, you have an option uh, to uh, go uh, with any entree, pretty much, uh, lobster tail, a main lobster tail. Everything normally gets two dinner sides. Um, I chose red skin potatoes because uh, a lot of people like uh, meat I potatoes. I love that with steak. <laughs> I think it's great. Now let's get over to this delicious scallop dish. Yeah, we use, um, this is called the um, fiery scallops. It's an appetizer here. It's very popular. We use uh, sea scallops. They're a little larger than uh, the bay scallops. They're fresh. Uh, we roast it with a nice pepper uh, cheese sauce, uh, a little Parmesan cheese on top mm -hmm. to garnish it. It's uh, roasted in the oven. Oh, yeah, and of course, the traditional Maine lobster roll. Yeah, yeah, the biggest favorite here. Uh, we use Maine lobster. We do it traditional on top of some chopped lettuce. Mm. Uh, the bun is the key. That's the authentic, uh, well, it looks like a hot dog bun that's on each side and, right. and uh, grilled. Uh, we chose French fries and coleslaw with that. And then the lobster bisque, which Chris Westlake back at ABC, she requested that as well. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll be a surprise. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you have an option to put Maine lobster in it. It doesn't only come with it, but okay. a lot of people get it with Kinda the Maine lobster. It elevates it up, it right? It elevates it pretty much, yes. Now, for somebody looking for light and fresh salads, I think this dish is really going to hit its note. Yeah, this is the watermelon salad. Um, it comes with watermelon, a uh, little bit of uh, strawberries, uh, spring mix, uh, uh, a little bit of goat cheese, and I chose uh, fresh salmon, a little blackened. Nice. Uh, I like it blackened. Uh, it's the best way, I think, to get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now, mom and dad, a little Portuguese kale soup, one of my favorites. Another grandmother's recipe, assorted beans, uh, Portuguese sausage in there, uh, linguiça. It's in a nice uh, vegetable and beef base. Uh, it's got a little, uh, little bit of uh, pork in there. It's, it's awesome. so good. And look at the uh, the bowl of jewels, I can only call it. And another Portugal dish, uh, port, uh, seafood Portugal. You get a little a lobster in there, uh, mussels, uh, middle neck clams, steamers, authentic steamers from mm. where you're from. And uh, it's over pasta and a night, nice uh, garlic white wine sauce with also linguiça. And with a little garlic bread. This is heaven. This reminds me of Gloucester where my restaurants were. But there's more. You're going to meet a cutie patootie and have a little dessert in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. It's hard to see when you're outside at night. It's time for the Atomic Beam Sunblast. The
the new solar-powered light that's super bright. Atomic Beam Sunblast lets you add a light anywhere, and the atomic solar panels charge the built-in lithium-ion battery quickly. Then the 180-degree motion sensor turns on the light when you get near and automatically turns off when you disappear. Look, here's a best-selling outdoor solar light. And here's the Super Bright Atomic Beam Sunblast. Get the Super Bright Atomic Beam Sunblast for only $19.99. But wait, call right now and you can double your order and get a second sunblast. Plus, our best-selling Atomic Beam Flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. That's two Atomic Beam Sunblasts and the Atomic Beam Flashlight. Call now. Call 1-800-431-6640. That's 1-800-431-6640. Or visit mysunblast.com. So call 1-800-431-6640. Order now. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. And you cannot be turned down for any reason. Even if you have health problems or are living on a fixed income, guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance policies could work for you with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as $9.40 a month. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. My mom didn't have life insurance and the cost all fell on me. And that's expensive. We're, we're still paying for yeah, that. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Call 1 800 218 4991. Now, in one phone call, you can help prepare your family with protection amounts up to $25,000. There are no medical tests or health questions. And remember, you cannot be turned down for any reason. In fact, True Stage policies are already protecting over 18 million Americans. And rates are designed to be affordable, starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as $9.40 a month. Plus, your price will never increase, and your benefit will never decrease. When I leave, everything will be taken care of for them. Call 1-800-218-4991. Now, for a free, no-obligation quote. True Stage offers plans to fit your budget with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1 800 218 4991 now. Now, your ABC 7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Looking at an air temperature coming in at 88 degrees, dew point value 74, so it's a warm day. Heat index already at 97 degrees. We'll crack the 100 degree mark on our heat index today. 88 in Arcadia, Mayak at 88, Northport the same. Got 88 in Sarasota, 88 in Venice, 87 in Inglewood, 85, a little cooler there at Longbow Key. We have some showers building in inland areas, now well inland areas, so that may help to cool off a few of these temperatures this afternoon, but there'll be fewer showers around today than there were 24 hours ago. We got some slightly drier air that's moved in. We also have high pressure building in. We have an easterly wind flow as opposed to a southeasterly wind flow. All of those things are aiding in uh, reducing rain chances a bit. We're at a 30 percent now rain chance. 90, I'd go with about 91 or two as a daytime high. We'll probably be at about 90 by 3 p.m. And as we head into the evening hours, we'll taper that off to about 20 percent. So we have these showers out in Gulf waters. They are of no consequence to us. They will continue to move out toward the center of the uh, Gulf waters with a general easterly wind flow. A couple of areas still have some um, some river warnings up for the Horse Creek, Peace River, Little Manatee, all have a chance at uh, seeing some flooding conditions over the course of the weekend. They're just at minor flood stage though. Most of them will be a really very little significance. We have some dotted areas of uh, rain showers in presently now moving into Hardy and DeSoto County. It's all light stuff. Uh, no thunder associated with any of it. Not they're not thunderstorms, uh, but they will continue to march toward the coast. Now I'm not saying that inland areas won't get any rainfall. They will, but I think we'll see greater rainfall amounts nearer the coastline today than we've seen over the last couple of days because of that easterly wind flow. That'll be the case right straight through the weekend. I think that east wind will continue. A frontal boundary, a trough of low pressure carved out along the eastern seaboard, continues today. 
certainly has produced a lot of rainfall. We've got warnings up now for flooding and flash flooring, flooding across much of the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. All part of that trough of low pressure, which eventually will just lift out. As it lifts out over the weekend and kind of dissipates away, high pressure will be allowed to build in from the, uh, from the Atlantic. And that will help to reduce our rainfall chances a little bit. And it will reinforce this easterly wind flow. It'll also drive in some slightly drier air, and that will also limit our rain chances a little bit. That easterly flow important, of course, not only to give some areas of the Sun Coast that haven't got as much rain as other areas have a chance at seeing some much-needed showers, but it will also help to blow some of that red tide toxin back out toward open waters of the Gulf as opposed to residential areas inland. East wind builds today, drier air moves in, and some storms closer to the coastline over the next several days. You can see that little bit of drier air here indicated on the water vapor imagery is this kind of tan color. This shows you the swirls and motions in the air where the dry air is, where it is not. Where it is not is where you see this tan color. And consequently, aloft, we're going to dry things out just a little bit over the next several days. Southeast wind switching to the southwest as we develop that little bit of a sea breeze today, becoming more easterly overnight and more due easterly over the course of the weekend. Prevailing winds will stay out of the east. We'll have a 30% uh, chance of rain today and tomorrow. Then over the next several days, we'll increase that to 40%. As we get into next week, we'll lower it even further to 20% for a day or two. And then we'll start to slowly increase the rain chances. Scott? All right, John, thank you. Still to come in your Suncoast News, bringing back the dream team. Two Hollywood actors teaming up yet again. What's new in entertainment news? Next. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. Me, pick me, me, me. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Oh man, I love technology. Hey yo, check out my new phone. Look at this right here. For years, the DeSoto Club has needed improvements. Join me and Boys and Girls Club of Manatee County as we raise money to build a brand new facility. It will be bigger and better, just like it was 40 years ago when I attended. Invest in kids, build great futures. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. 
kind of my favorite part is to end the day on a sweet note. So I have Miss Michaela, who's the official lobster pot dessert recommender, right? So what do we have for dessert today, um, Michaela? We have the Boston cream pie and the key lime pie. Which one should we try? Um, I think we should try that one. Okay, well, it's very, you know, when you think about New England, I think it's, go ahead, you get the first bite. Oh, I knew it. You were going straight for the chocolate. I'll go for the cream part of it. That's good. That is really good. Mm. My bike didn't have any chocolate, though, because somebody ate it off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all come out to the lobster pot. Right here in Siesta Key, relax, enjoy, get a big lobster, a lobster roll, a fresh salad, and definitely get one of Michaela's desserts. Have a great weekend, guys, and we'll send it back to you. Bye. Bye. She is adorable, Judy. Thank you so much. In entertainment news, what's next from the Oscar-winning filmmaker of Moonlight? And reunions of both the big and the small screens. Here's David Daniel with a Hollywood Minute. There are days when you wonder what your role is in this country. what your future is in it. Here's your first look at If Beale Street Could Talk, Oscar-winning filmmaker Barry Jenkins' follow-up to Moonlight and based on the critically acclaimed novel by James Baldwin. That's his voiceover in the trailer. The drama hits theaters in November. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are teaming up again to tell an amazing true story that's gone viral recently, how an ex-policeman allegedly stole millions of dollars by rigging the McDonald's Monopoly game. Affleck is set to direct, Damon to star, and both to produce. Neither of us really are looking for a career in this, in hosting or in comedy. I mean, that was Brad Paisley and Carrie Underwood back in 2008, the first time the country stars hosted the CMA Awards. Since then, it's become a pretty regular side gig, if not a career. The pair is set to return for their 11th straight year hosting the show. They'll resume their very familiar roles in Nashville November 14th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, a lot going on in entertainment and yep. our weather. You no, were so, I'm encouraged by the wind shift. Yeah. If we could get that stuff you know what? blown can, out I, instead of in. I think I would say that if we, if we didn't have the red tide around right now, uh, this would be a couple of perfect August days because, you know, the rain chances are a little bit low. Yeah. Great beach weather, you know, a nice breezy wind. But we do have the red tide and the drift forecasts over the next several days do kind of carry it a little further out into the Gulf. So okay. we'll see what happens. All right, John. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend. We hope to see you again at 4 o'clock. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system could make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> Now, SoClean.com has released the world's first automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs and bacteria. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer, risk-free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. The SoClean works, and it's a really effective product, and I couldn't believe how easy it was to use. SoClean works on all popular CPAP machines and masks, destroying CPAP germs and bacteria without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and walk away. Voila! Sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398, or visit SoClean.com today. According to Golf Digest, two of the nation's top golf resorts are on the Robert Trench Owens Golf Trail, the Albert Opelika Marriott at Grand National, and the Renaissance Ross Bridge Golf Resort and Spa in Birmingham. Plus, the Marriott at Grand National was recognized as Hotel of the Year by Marriott International. Experience luxury and world-class golf Southern style. Visit rtjgolf resorts or call 800-949-4444 to book your trip to the trail.
Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now.